I am sort of coordinating this project from the city's uh, perspective. So, um, if you have any questions about how this uh, how this meeting goes and how the project goes, please contact me. I'll be available here all evening. You can get in touch with me. And um, if you're interested, there's a link to my direct email and to talk uh, about uh, landscape design and improvement for the city's um, the city-owned portion of College Park, which is right in the middle of the block, in the middle of College Park. So it's between College, Gerard, Bay, and Young. Um, in the middle there, there's an actual city park. You probably are very familiar with it. It's got a rink on it. It's got a fountain in it. And um, it needs a little bit of a facelift, and we're going to give it to, to the park. So we're here to hear what you guys want, what you guys are interested in. We're here to show you a couple of ideas and listen to what you have to think, say about those ideas. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce um, the councillor for Ward 27. Yes. Um, Kristen Wongtamp. And please don't hesitate to get in, um, in touch with me uh, all evening and following this presentation. Thanks. Thank you very much, Ms. Abby, and welcome everyone to our, uh, our consultation meeting. This has been a, a very exciting endeavor, um, trying to think of ways uh, and concepts to improve our park spaces in the ward. Uh, ward 27, as many of you know, whether you're residents or you happen to be working in the neighborhood, or you're coming down to play or to study, uh, you'll know that Ward 27 is a very diverse place. We've got 14 very distinct residential neighborhoods, five business improvement areas, and uh, right now you're in the Catherine area, all um, stewarded by the downtown Young Business Improvement Area. And so this conversation began when um, obviously the, uh, the Aura uh, Tower, which is under construction, and and probably still under construction for a little bit of time. But when ORA was, uh, was approved, there was a Section 37 package that was negotiated, and, uh, and we knew that the funds would be directed to uh, College Park. So there was gonna be some significant improvements that was required. So this community has, uh, has been very patient. You've been extremely gracious as the development has, uh, has been underway. I know that for a lot of folks who live and work in the area, uh, who see College Park as their immediate park, whether you're in a condominium and it's, and it's something that you overlook, or it's abutting your property, I know that it's been um, very, very challenging because maybe the park is not um, in a condition that you'd like it to be in. But we have um, now an opportunity to take what was a negative and to turn it into a, a very strong positive, so we want it to be an asset. Um, and um, there is about 2.9 million, just under $3 million for the renovation of this park, which is a sizable budget, but except for this park is special. You're not actually planting trees uh, in, a, in a normal tree pit. You're planting trees on top of a, a roof, a roof uh, that exists to protect uh, underground parking structure, which for those who are working in uh, and living in condominiums and, and office towers adjacent to, uh, that's probably where you park your car. So there'll be trees planted uh, and dotted along there. So the exercise began when we uh, we started working with the downtown Young BIA and the McGill Granby Residents Association, and we started to ask, and the Bay Clover Hill Community Association, and we asked the question, you know, how do we go about designing uh, an urban space for everyone, all the different types of users that will use this park? And, um, and we thought that one of the best ways to do that is having an exercise uh, talking about placemaking. So we can design a be beautiful park, but if, it doesn't, if it's not used, it's not going to be successful. And at the end of the day, the, the measure of success for us, the benchmark of success, is whether or not you're going to be using the park. So we went through that exercise with PPS, Placemaking uh, Project for Public Space from New York City, and uh, there were a number of community meetings held with the local stakeholders, and they went through uh, all sorts of uh, renderings and, and asking questions of how do you want to use the space. Um, and then subsequently, we've, uh, we've been working with a very talented uh, landscape architect team. They've done a lot of amazing public uh, uh, parks in terms of landscape spaces, not even just in Ontario, but throughout the, uh, the, the region. And uh, MBTW Group uh, is your lead landscape architect team. And uh, they put a lot of time and attention trying to listen to what uh, the residents and the property owners were saying. And uh, what you're going to see today is, a, is the results of, of that consultation. 
And uh, I'm going to hand it over to them because I think it's really exciting and uh, you don't need to hear from me. Oh, now we're going to take a look at some pictures and uh, they're going to explain to them, to explain to us how they, they came up with these concepts. And then we want to hear from you on what you think of what they've come up with based on your initial feedback. Uh, so it's great to see this group and uh, we welcome all sorts of dialogue and there is no right or wrong answer and, uh, and thank you for joining us tonight. And then we're going to recap on what were the results of the exercise we had last time because everyone was in, who was here was involved with an exercise in which they saw these images and they placed little stickies on them and prioritized images and, and it's important that you understand what were the results of that. But at this point, we were, we were here to engage in, in uh, discussions for the public for input into the design process. That's the stage where we're at, where we want your feedback, we're looking for your feedback to us. Um, we're going to summarize and define a program from our discussions. We've done that from the discussions we previously had. And we're going to develop two conceptual designs for the site. We are presenting those two conceptual designs this evening. Um, and then receive feedback from the public and determine the preferred concept. That's what we're hoping to receive from you tonight this evening, is your direction to us with respect to those two designs we're going to show you this evening. Um, as Natani pointed out earlier, just for those who may be still wondering, the site that we're looking at is the little yellow box on the site. So it's bounded, you know, it's right over there. It's bounded by um, Gerard and College and Young and Bay. And it's between those, all those little buildings, and maybe not so little, Bora um, is the next last building. Um, that's being uh, constructed that, that is actually precipitating this exercise. Now, as I mentioned, I don't want to spend too much time on this because I do want you to have time to see the design that Pat's going to be presenting, and we do want your feedback. But just for, as an aspect with respect to how we actually came up with the program, we came up with the program by going through that, that exercise we had last time where we had some images and ideas and asked for your feedback. The very first one was water feature design element. And we had asked for people's feedback on what they thought and did they think it was important. And I'm not going to go and read all the feedback on there. But ultimately, what you can see back from the number of responses back we had on water feature design element, it was deemed as being <clears throat> excuse me, very important and something that should be incorporated. And you're going to notice on the bottom of this particular uh, slide, you'll see some people who said, don't like jets, to the, and some people said, love them. This is not, this is typical. And it's something throughout the entire process we found. For every time there's a decision, we have an equal amount of people who have opposite viewpoints. And it's our job to kind of sift through all of that and, and present a design that, that best suits the, the constraints that we have within the site. So water is designed for a feature. Yes, that, was, that came back as being something that was important to be incorporated into the design. So there's more comments with respect to water. Skating a design element, again, we received numerous comments back to us that skating was important and should be integrated. The form of the skating, again, there was some discussion of what it should look like. Um, and surprisingly, we did have some people who did say they would like, thought hockey was great um, and thought hockey was, was wonderful to look at in the evening and, and live in the space. But, it's, but moreover, most people did come back with what they were looking was something like that, that first image on the top, which was more trail-like, and, and something that it was all ages. Um, a flexible gathering space or a main events plaza. You guys came up 50-50 on this. Half of you said it was really important. Other half of you said, nope, don't want it, don't, don't, don't like it, don't want to include it. You were concerned about the noise and, and various other aspects that, that, that this space would generate. Um, so it, it was, it's something that we had to consider, but it was a 50, almost perfectly split 50-50. Equally 50-50 was the community, community plaza. In the community plaza exercise that was through PPS, they identified community plaza as a children's space, possibly. We brought that forward to the group. 50% of you said, and exactly 50% of you said, yes, children's play area, very important, absolutely a must. 50% of you came back and said, no way, no how, uh-uh. Do not do it. So again, it's something that we need to discuss, and it's, 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 it's incorporated in many of our designs, but it is, a, it is a discussion point that we need to come back to you people with. Promenade and gardens. <clears throat> Generally, there was, there was feedback with that, and, and there was smaller amounts of feedback with that, but all of the feedback that we did receive 
did say that they thought gardens were important. We did have a mixture about what type of garden should be, what a garden should be, but there was some, some positive feedback that those elements and a garden element should be included within the design. Oh, do we have more people? If you want to come on in, just come on into the room. Okay. We can also bring your chairs in. If we have to, we can get more chairs in. Pavilion. We talked about the pavilion, and a number of responses came back that they didn't think a pavilion, per se, with washrooms was important, um, but many people did feel that a pavilion of some sort, um, whether or not it was some place to store your things or to put on your skates, and it didn't necessarily have to be enclosed. That did come back from, from the feedback we got from the group. Constructed elements. Um, from the constructed elements discussion, what did come back to us as feedback from you was that many of you felt that gateway features was a very important element that should be considered. And a gateway feature is a unifying element or a, a entry point into the various components of the park. Um, and then again, landscape character. Um, less comments on the landscape character, and that's actually the number of comments you see on the screen are exactly the amount of comments that we received back. So less than there were with respect to other <coughs> elements so it was perceived as not being as important to you as a group, but still the comments that we, we did receive were very important to us, that they did, they did direct us on what you were actually looking for. Um, pedestrian circulation, minor comments that were, that were generated, um, but did mention things such as no grass, um, flowers, and the concern with respect to maintenance. And, and the desire for long, winding walks. And that came up more than one occurrence when we actually read some of the feedback sheets as well that came back from you. Site furnishings and, and seating opportunities. Um, we did receive quite a bit of feedback, and, and many of it, the, much, very much of the feedback was very much directed to the same kind of thought. Variety of seatings. You were looking for a variety of opportunities, but there was a general concern with respect to flexible seatings and them being stolen. And that did come back from a number of a feedback, a number of uh, feedback sheets. But the desire to have good quality seating, and the desire to have actually shaded seating, was something that did come back to us on, on several points. Um, public art. We asked you in a very general sense, what do you think about public art? Should we actually be looking at it? And the answer was no. You guys didn't want any public art, and didn't really think it was that important. So that's kind of, kind of interesting. So um, that directs us as well on how we actually move forward. So through all of this exercise, by going through these, we actually came up with a program. And, and very simply, it was 14 points that came about out of this as the program summary. And the program summary basically says things like, water in some form is to be included. Skating in some form is to be included. There's a 50-50 split on the inclusion of a movie screen, because that was something that we had shown. And people had some very positive and some very negative comments with respect to that possibility. But there was a 50-50 split on the desire for a flexible gathering space. Um, there was a, a lot of concern regarding noise, and there was a repeated concern regarding dogs. Um, in, in very many instances, on the responses back on the children's play area, there were people that said, we need a place for dogs, we don't need a place for kids. As bluntly as that. Um, and so, um, there was a 50 fit split on the possible inclusion of a play area. There was a desire, an expressed desire for trees and gardens that are low maintenance. Um, there was a desire for an oasis. There were more than one of the feedback sheets we got back that repeatedly used that word that they were looking for an oasis. Um, majority of responses pertaining to washrooms did not seem to uh, see that as an important. So the majority of the feedback was that they weren't important. There were some feedback, though, that did say that they should be included within the design. Um, many felt that the idea of gateways was important. Desire for walkways that were curving and addressed desire lines was deemed as being important. Shaded seating and a variety of seating that was seen as being, uh, was seen as being important. And then the last was no public art. So taking this consolidated form of the program summary, that then did inform how we actually developed the designs. And we actually pr proposed two designs. And, we're at, and I'm speeding through this because I do want to get to the, to the concept designs. And I'm conscious of the fact we started late. Um, but you know, if, if people have particular questions, you can question me after this. But we're 
that are trying to keep you back on, get back on track. And we're going to show you the two concepts and designs. And then we're going to actually ask you for feedback. And there will be an open session, an open forum for you to feedback at the end of the two presentations. We're going to ask you to, that Pat, Pat will be doing the presentations of the two designs. Let them get through the two presentations and then we'll do a general feedback from there. And then again, there'll be opportunity for everyone else to comment on the little green sheets. Okay, so Pat. The process of exploring, um, understanding the site, understanding its culture, understanding its context to its surroundings. And so there's a series of issues that we always engage in in this process. And this site is actually quite complex. It has um, built form that's, that's residential above, but actually some retail at grade. It has important linkages. And because the site is is somewhat secluded, it, it was also important for us to understand how to improve the linkages and connections to, um, uh, to the city framework and to the street framework. And then work within the context of all the programming ideas. And, and what I'm going to show you is really a process of interpreting uh, what we've heard and beginning to put a conceptual framework in place that um, begins to explore program sites context and all the issues of connectivity um, and a destination because I think there's a desire that that this is really a successful space that can be used um, by all levels of ability um, all all through each of the seasons and so this is our first concept it basically um, defines the central area the the existing This is where the existing pavilion is. And one of the opportunities that we saw from the central point of the pavilion, because it really is a knuckle point on the site, is to perhaps break it up and, and form it into actually, uh, instead of a large building, into two pavilions. And notwithstanding the discussion on whether washrooms are appropriate or not, we, we certainly want to try and incorporate on, at grade rather than below grade if, if the skating is going to remain as an activity, it requires infrastructure. Infrastructure that's mechanical, electrical, uh, you know, the compressors, et cetera, et cetera. And the housing for that, you know, could certainly be incorporated into one of these two pavilions. Um, and so, you know, we don't have an exact program for that, but we would like to break the scale down of those two spaces and, and open up some sight lines uh, be between them rather than creating a blockage at this point across the site, because it is quite an important spot within the site. The, the opportunity then is to understand, and let's just talk about skating, because you know, this, this park, its main activity through certainly the winter has been skating. Um, the problem that we saw was that, notwithstanding it, it's tired and, and, and it's aged, is what does it become in the summer? The reflecting pool that's currently there um, does not seem to be uh, overly utilized. It seems to have uh, some problems with it. And so in our discussions, we felt that if we could still incorporate skating, and the, the image that was most compelling to everyone in the sessions was the idea of not just an open body of, of, of uh, ice, but actually the idea of skating almost as a lineal you know, kind of experience, uh, a, a circuit system, a loop system. And the image that we showed was actually from a park down on the waterfront, Sam Smith Park, where it was actually a loop system. And so this concept begins to explore that idea that, that there's a, a structural element, and it's really an open webbed uh, metal framed uh, arbor piece that is really the initiation. It gives you a bit of, a bit of canopy. It, it's not meant to be totally enclosed, and I'll show you an image in a, in a bit of sort of one precedent that we feel has relevance. But the idea then is from these pavilions where the skate uh, you know, uh, change could occur, is that we actually then have a loop system. And I think this was quite compelling to a number of, uh, of people in the last session, that you actually skate through the landscape. And the idea that the edges become opportunities to, be, to introduce a canopy layer, um, you know, and also a, a, a textured ground plane uh, would actually be quite compelling. And so the idea was that we would explore this idea of a loop system that would really be not a depressed element on the site, but actually flush with the, with the adjacent paving. It may just have a different uh, materiality expression, expression to it. 
that would then define new new places on the site, and the central one would be this site, which uh, would basically be a, an open area because I think when you have a park of, of, of this nature with the opportunity that all the residents on on the adjacent edges to this site could actually have a flexible space where if, for instance, the, you know, there was the idea about is there you know, a programmed activity, is, it, is there a theater night, is there a, a community event that could occur here, I think the opportunity to have this open flexible space certainly has, um, you know, certainly has some advantage to do that. And it could also be used as just a very casual seating space on a on a, on a grass surface. Now I know you know there's a desire not to have a lot of grass on the site, and you know Christine and I debated well if if the maintenance is, is an issue, but the idea has validity. You know we could always look at a synthetic material that is that is quite technically advanced now to actually achieve that. But you know you could imagine sitting under a canopy tree and just you know just reading a book on on on, on, a, on the ground plane. Um, you know, in, in a space like this. The, the other loop is the idea that we could actually introduce um, a different element of water. It's, it's not the big surface any longer that, that, that defines the skating area, but in fact, it is an area that could have two types of lighting, and I'll show you some images. One is that it could have a, a series of vertical masks that could be um, uh, animated uh, with, with water that could spray off the top edge um, and also a series of, of mist jets within the ground plane itself. And, and uh, you know, I think the idea is that in the winter, you know, this could be you know, um, closed down but, and then the skating would take over and there could be even some informal seating within that space um, as well, but that they would not interfere as, as activities one to the other. The visual access through this space, we gave some real thought to because I think it's important that when you're walking along Young Street or the edges that come into the site, that you actually get a signal that something is quite unique and it almost wants to, to pull you into the site. And so the idea of, of a, a gateway piece of some sort, we were quite compelled by the, the gateways on the eastern side of, of Young Street and those as, they're not shown on this plan, but those as kind of reference signals to then repeat an element on, on the west side and draw you into the site uh, we have to leave room for a, a fire truck in terms of, of emergency access, but this becomes almost a lineal kind of pedestrian way that has a series, a uh, rhythm of, of vertical wall pieces, again, that could have lighting incorporated into them, and they begin to then create these smaller seating pockets where informal uh, dining tables or outdoor cafe tables could occur with, with seating, and they become almost you know a different type of seating. We, we've, worked hard to introduce a variety of seating opportunities within the site. But with the addition of, a, of an alley of, of canopy and shade trees, these actually become at a scale which is quite, quite important you know, as it compares to the more open scale within the site itself. The ending of that becomes almost a gateway piece with seating and a back planting almost as an arc, and it could have an arbor piece over the top of it. So this, this actually really has an incredible potential to have a, quite a distinct character uh, within itself. The, the visual line then actually brings you to a, what we call a, a kind of a focal specimen, and the idea here is that this could actually be a, a, a very large specimen conifer that could be lit um, during the you know during the, uh, uh, the holiday season and actually be on a visual access line uh, you know from the entry. So it becomes kind of a, a visual vertical focal element. Then within the texture of the planting that the skating would, would work around. This element here is and there was again a fair amount of discussion about the number of dogs that um, that are brought and you know residents use the park for. Um, this is really a precedent that we, we explored, which is in Chicago. And what it is, is it's a double fenced in court. Um, there's a, a, an, inner, an outer ring where you bring your dog in, you can take the leash off, there's a second gate, and then there's a, an area within that where the dogs can basically um, you know, have, have uh, an unleashed uh, area. The city does have a number of dog parks. This is at a completely different scale and a completely different approach because everything again is is set into the context that this is a this is a soft space as well, 
and you know the edges would be textured with the low maintenance planting and and strategically placed trees um, there would be a water element within that space and i'll show you a few images after i, I work my way through the plan the uh, west edge of this concept is is this idea of having a of course access to the townhomes which uh, would certainly be necessary but this is almost like a, a lineal ribbon garden or a lineal kind of park walkway and the different greens that you see on the plan and the, and the canopy of trees really express this kind of organic and formal uh, kind of character to the space. Uh, the textures represent the possibility of different materials that could have a, uh, a, a different pattern through the growing seasons. Uh, and also the opportunity at strategic points to add uh, seeding, for instance, uh, that works basically uh, throughout this space so that, again, you could sit at any one of these spaces within this, within this very kind of soft and canopy uh, lineal landscape. Uh, but it also creates for those that just want to take a walk uh, over lunch hour if you're working in the area or early in the morning or whenever, that you actually have this really kind of narrative that you can walk through um, that is quite different than, you know, than a more direct kind of open uh, walkway through the park. There are areas that are paved that are specifically left open and larger because of the desire for uh, city maintenance vehicles and emergency vehicles to come into the park from the access that we need to re re you know, leave sufficient space for you know, uh, Zamboni, which would probably occur in this space, and maneuverability of those vehicles um, within the park. But they also provide the added opportunity, again, uh, when we work through the initial visioning with um, PPS, the um, firm from New York City, there was an, a lot of opportunities, if, if there are flexible open spaces, that they could be left for programmed or spontaneous um, uh, larger uh, community events uh, within the park itself. The edge along the south is really, again, the idea of a community garden, but it interpreted almost as a series of, of kind of lineal uh, low shrub beds and informal planting of trees and basically, again, a different nature of seeding that could occur along this entire edge. There are some elements that we have to incorporate. There are skylights here that are incorporated a ramp down. So there are some elements, and such as these, the, the stairwells that currently exist on the site that also uh, have to be incorporated in, into the plan. And so this plan is, in, in, in summary then, is, is really about, oh, sorry, I've missed one spot, the, the idea of an arced inset within the central green, uh, which could have a second small water feature of a, of a completely different character than, than, than this one. So this one you could actually interact with. This is really more of a quieter sitting space with water as a calming element. It's almost a, a space of repose, if you like, that uh, could be um, you know, just a favorite spot during, during the day or, or in the morning. And so here's some of the images. This is Sam Smith Park where this, you know, the, the loop um, skating rink is, is uh, currently occurring. It seems to be quite you know, working quite well. The idea of the arbor, and, and again, we, we, this is an example actually in Kelowna of a frame, you know, kind of metal uh, system that basically creates kind of an interesting canopy uh, overhead. And then with the, you know, in this particular case, colored glass discs were used to actually, when, when sunlight penetrates through, it creates a, a very kind of magical uh, uh, kind of play on light and sun um, through that. Now, uh, this image, I don't know if you can all see it, but this is the dog park in Chicago. And we think this, you know, is the kind of uh, space that the canopy layer would fit in the context of the entire canopy layer of the park. But the ground plane then basically begins to form these spaces where, um, you know, water feeding station and a place where the dogs can basically you know, run uh, or you know, be with the with owners uh, within that space but can be unleashed. The mist as an idea uh, relative to the vertical mass, and you know, these are wooden poles, but we certainly see the opportunity to play with the materiality of, of that kind of an idea where you get a, a broadcast of water, but these could also be interesting you know, when they're lit. Um, and LED lighting has come in an amazing way in terms of its technology that at night they could almost be, be markers in a very subtle way uh, within the park itself. Lighting is 
can be achieved in many different ways. I mean, you know, they don't necessarily have to be light standards with uh, with cap uh, lighting on top. You know, elements within the park that can be used just as, as as kind of seating elements, but lighting is incorporated into it, so that in fact the park begins to take on its own personality through the furnishings that are introduced into it. The, the this is really just an image that that basically says you know canopy and color and texture and and really designing it to um, capture the senses is a really nice idea and so every time you potentially come to the park whether it's in the spring or summer or fall through the color sequencing and the actual character of the branch structure one can begin to orchestrate uh, you know the personality of, of this place in a very special way the, the edges to the walkways and this is actually in Paris but what it is, is it's this very broad you know, uh, walkway that's probably about 20 feet wide. Um, and just you know, the casual placement of these benches <coughs> creates this, this dialogue between walkers and, and those that are sitting. And, and people you know, just really enjoy watching people. And I think some of the edges that we form to create these softer areas could have this personality <coughs> as well. And then this is how we use these, the idea of these low-framed, uh, structured, low hedges uh, that do not block views, but they actually define space. And you know, when one begins to integrate seating into them, they actually create these smaller rooms in the landscape. <clears throat> and this is what we interpret as an idea on the south, on the south edge. The upper uh, image is in a part where the idea of adding a screen and a programmed idea of uh, you know a, a come to the park for a film night is really you know it's a programmed idea. But if our if our park can accommodate those ideas, if there is a will to to do that, it, you know it would be great if we could actually achieve that. Thank you, Brian. So this is a completely different kind of interpretation of the same very much about creating an urban lineal east-west uh, alley where the trees are much more structured in their regiment. There's a rhythm of them, but there is also the opportunity for you know for seating uh, in, in, within those, and it's really the idea that we layer three rows of trees um, and actually make connections to the streets and offset the, uh, the entryways. The same idea about the edges being opportunities for smaller seating courts. Uh, here the, we brought the, in this particular case, the idea of gateway much further into the site and repeated it so that these become familiar objects in, in the park when one uh, identifies it from the street as uh, actually the, the entryway into uh, the park. The next thing we did on this was, again, we, we maintained the positioning of and breaking up and add, adding more uh, transparency through these two pavilions and adding the opportunity to harbor. <clears throat> but we've made a, a connection between the skating and this sort of major uh, walkway uh, bridge, if you like. And what it does is it allows people that are moving through the park to engage in a much more significant way with what's happening in this space. And so if, if you can imagine on your way to work in the morning or if you're going shopping and you move along this, this space, that you know you would be you know within you know in you know inches of, of actual a completely different activity and that is the skating. It's it's a it's more of a loop a loop system but in a completely different uh, in a much more structured way. Uh, the centerpiece uh, does incorporate seating, and we've played with an idea here that we add one or two or perhaps even three very vertical, very kind of interesting uh, pieces. And I'll show you an image of, of one opportunity that this could be, but it's the idea that this is a water piece. And it's a very structural element, but water would actually uh, mist out of this piece and actually spray onto the pavement in the summer in this area. So that it actually is, is quite visual, 
um, but it's also something that um, you know kids could, could interpret with without it being a, a formalized uh, water spray uh, pad. The arbor uh, would be proposed to go here, and again, a, a seating band, so that if you wanted to just come and watch what happens in this space, you could actually sit along this edge under this arbor and just get a full dynamic view of the entire of the entire park. It's really a, almost a promontory overview space. Um, I've experienced this in, in a number of places in Europe where seniors in particular, you know, it, in this one case it was a marina and there was this lineal arbor piece where seating occurred and all the boats were in anchor in the, in the bay and people just were there from morning till night and you know, it became a, quite a social space, which is really another opportunity if it's shaded <clears throat> and it has a, uh, a, an interesting uh, view shed um, and you interact with people as they move through it, it, it actually has the opportunity to be quite a, 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 a unique destination. The back side of it is what we've called sort of the, the lineal uh, water flues. And again, it's, it's an idea that this space um, really takes on a visual edge to this activity. And from each of these columns, there would be the idea that water would, would have a, a, a spout that would come out. It would run along a lineal a runnel um, adjacent to a paved area and a seating element and a, and a written garden. And so it actually is a different way of interpreting water um, without it uh, being just a sitting element or, or uh, a reflecting element. Um, but it actually, again, as you move along this more urban space, you would actually view, view that from this, from this space or from these kind of more playful connector arms or these ribbons uh, of walkways that would also you know, penetrate through, through the site. We've incorporated seating almost, it's not amphitheater seating, but it is sort of a tiered element with uh, integrated with some planting at the, at the walkway or the stairwell exit. Uh, that would again, for those that are uh, coming to skate, they could put their skates on <clears throat> along this uh, edge, uh, or if you're just coming to watch and supervise, that would occur as well. The north-south link and in entries into the town homes occurs here, <clears throat> And we've created a pattern off of that where it would create a series of, of gardened um, pieces, if you like, that again, the texturing, it's a complete, it's, it's, it's not as organic as in the initials or in the first scheme, but again, it creates this opportunity to create a series of, of garden uh, areas. And our view of that is that they, we would not seek to create high maintenance, but rather um, <coughs> a singular material uh, within a within a panel or, or perhaps one material within a few panels. There's the opportunity to have it work within this entire area or conversely, uh, you know, this uh, arc could be uh, just a sodded area where, where sitting could occur again if that's, uh, if that's desirable. The, um, the space on the uh, on the east side um, is this this the idea of introducing canopy, <clears throat> allowing uh, clear circulation around it. And this is where, again, the dock up, uh, unleashed area could occur, but also this could be a play area. And so we left this, again, just as kind of a place marker on, on this particular uh, concept, where through dialogue, you know, the, the, the actual decision about that as a space could, you know, could be uh, uh, discussed and, and brought to uh, a further level of, of conceptual design. Um, we, th we, we feel that the, um, the third dimension is important in these plans because you will be viewing the park from you know, <clears throat> any number of floors that it actually had a very kind of strong um, uh, floor plate to them. Uh, but yet within the plan, there's a variety of, of spaces um, that basically create more open spaces, more flexible spaces, but also very intimate spaces that are at a completely different scale and can actually become quieter places within within the park as well. Notwithstanding that sight lines 
um, are, are quite important and so we wanted to also maintain that there's always sort of clear connectivity uh, from a sight line perspective through the entire through the entire park and so that's really just uh, on the images <clears throat> and so that element that I talked about we thought this sort of had some real you know kind of intrigue where we could and I know you know there was some dialogue that public art may not be <clears throat> something to be explored at any great length but if it actually is an idea that it can actually program and create um, these big friendly objects that could be also water pieces um, they actually may have some some real interest to the open areas and they become almost the game recognizable pieces within the park um, you know the skating the, the texturing of the ground plane uh, the idea of, of these kind of lineal runnels of, of, uh, of water that the water at the end would basically disappear recycle come back to the to the vertical columns and and uh, spout out again and then this is more sort of just an image that begins to kind of express the community garden edge which is really about still maintaining uh, a textured ground plane but it would be through you know different textures to the paving patterns and to the ground plane uh, and that the canopy layer would then basically knit it all together um, also the the idea that that lighting could be quite a fascinating and animating element what you're actually looking at here are metal fabricated panels that introduce LED lighting. Now, we're not suggesting that this be, you know, something that's overly programmed, but you can uh, actually create quite an interesting effect through subtle use of color and uh, positioning of lighting uh, on elements that really begin to kind of describe the part. So that's really just an overview of our interpretation of the programming that we chatted about at the at the last session, and uh, it's, I think it's it sets a direction. We're, we we really present it to you as a framework, not as a not as a completed solution, uh, but something for discussion uh, to see if in fact uh, there is a uh, preference in direction from uh, from these two concepts. Thank you. Thank you. Just chatting about two directions. Um, and that this was a process, a process of testing and, and receiving feedback and applying it back to, you know, to the plan. So um, I think this was very a very healthy discussion. I think we received a lot of uh, interesting input and new input. And so I think you know, our task will be to um, have listened and have uh, the opportunity to kind of retest and you know, obviously, there's some there's some fairly significant issues. The dogs it seems to be certainly one, and that's one we're going to I think have to wrestle with a bit and understand. Um, you know, what is the best context? You know, so that the park works for you know for everyone who is a stakeholder in in, in this particular space. Um, you know, issues such as uh, safety and lighting. Um, you know, there is really a matrix of decision making that needs to occur where. Uh, you know, we certainly have understood that you know that sight lines in this plan have been actually addressed, and that the the part of the solution to maintaining um, strong connections, open uh, visual sight lines, transparency is in actually the details of the materiality. And so, you know, we would certainly then you know not engage in a process where we would be creating density you know in the first six feet. And, and I think you know that would be sort of a detail. We're not at that stage at this point, but the comment is very valid, and, and we you know we certainly understand it. And, and we also believe that it's something that needs to be um, really brought into the thinking about you know the, the actual uh, delineation of, the, of whatever the final solution will be. This is a framework, and I think if, you know once we engage and put something on paper, you can see what has happened is that we've had very healthy feedback, and I think that's really the first step in us now basically you know understanding it testing it against the plan and seeing you know and because it will change i mean you know, this was never intended to be a final solution but we wanted to explore some ideas because we heard you know that certain elements you know were compelling and important to everyone in this room um you know like like the skating the other the other thing that i think i wanted to say is 
is that really the final solution will probably be an appropriate balance. Because when we look at trying to create as much green as possible, yet having to deal with you know the, the comment that was made about this is a cut through. I mean, a lot of people move through this space, and so somehow you know we have to address both of those in, a, in an appropriate manner and in a creative way, so that in fact we're not creating blockages and, and, and creating more frustration in terms of how people want to connect and that the sight lines are very clear and under, understandable. Yet we do want to create a, a you know, the, the word serenity used. At the last meeting, the word backyard was used. This is your backyard, and I think you know that's a term that you know we should you know, really keep you know, conscious of in this, in this discussion. So you know, it, it, it's we've listened, and uh, we're going to take it back and um, and and, and re, you know rework the plan, bringing all of this information into uh, the next stage of. of you know, decision making and discussions, and so there will be more discussions, um, and there will be an opportunity to uh, to revisit it again for all of you. So, thank you for your comments, and I don't know if Christine wants to speak anymore, but it's been very healthy and very um, useful for us to you know to engage with you in this process because that's really uh, very much what it is. I think that um, the comment that it's a hybrid is probably a, a likely combination. Um, it, very often that's what it is. It isn't, isn't one or the other. Though we have received your comments, and, and Pat and I'll go back and we'll, uh, we'll, we'll review this. Um, we're going to summarize the comments. And, and we summarize the comments that we heard both from you and, and from your feedback sheets. And again, that is going to then inform us of how we actually move forward in the next phase. Understanding that there's always going to be going to be you know divergent opinions, and, and we have to then make a balance of the opinions of, of both the desires of the residents and the desires, you know, with respect to the city desires and everything else that we do have to take into account, and we will we'll actually take that into the um, in the next step. Um, what one of the steps that's actually going to happen, and it's not really going to. Um, you may not understand what that is, it may not affect you as much, is that we actually have to present this concept to the DRP. The DRP is the Design Review Panel for the City of Toronto. We will be taking both of these concepts to the DRP on December the 4th and presenting it to the DRP for their input. Uh, the DRP, the Design Review Panel, is made up of design professionals, architects, landscape architects, urban designers um, throughout the city, and um, they will then review and provide comments to us and provide further direction. Um, it's, a, it's a peer review panel and uh, we are doing that on, on December the 4th. After we do all of that, we take all of those comments that we're going to receive, we're then going to, then going to refine the preferred concept or refine and prepare a preferred concept. Um, the next step after that is that we actually have to do some costing. And this is some, some of the difficult decisions that are going to have to be made. Um, only once the costing has been uh, has taken place. I mean, I think everyone is aware of the fact that we have three million dollars, and we will only be able to build a three million dollar park, um, and that three million dollars includes all fees and, and you know design fees and all the other consultants. So that with the we have to then look at the cost of the parks and, and how do we actually try to pick and choose and see how we can actually formulate what we're actually going to build. Um, we then um, prepare, um, meet back with the working group. So there's a, there has been an active working group that has been engaged within this for the last year. We're going to meet back with the working group. Some members of the working group are here. We're going to meet back with you in February. Okay, we're going to come back with the revised um, concept. We're going to come back with some costing, and we're going to actually going to go through an exercise with the working group with the revised concept. Um, we are then going to go, and it doesn't really show on here, but uh, we actually have to go back to the DRP. You have to go back to the DRP, the Design Review Panel. We're back at the Design Review Panel for peer review, peer review on, on March 23rd. Um, again, and then from there, we then take the design back. We do do refinements to the design. We do refinements with respect to costing, and we are back again to the public, to you group, the, the group that's here, we will be back on May the 1st. That's, that's the projected date at this point. So expect to see notification either in the papers or um, within, we have mailings, there's emails, there's all, there's, there's a, numerous ways in which the, the notification has been occurring. 
Um, I think that many of you may have come through the, ma the, the mailings that came to you personally. Um, we will be doing that again um, for the May 1st meeting. And I, I don't, you know, in advance of, the May, of May 1st, we will, as a little reminder, send out invitations to this group again. And we will meet you again back here with the final design and the go forward design of what we are actually moving forward to and moving on to through working drawings. After May 1st, after the meeting, we actually have to actually proceed to do drawings for this part and drawings that would then take us to construction drawings um, that would take us to the end of the summer and um, start, start doing a, um, tendering for the park. So uh, we'll see you back here in, in May. But before you go, I think, I think Councillor Montana wants to say a few words. First of all, I'd like to thank the, uh, the Landscape Architects, uh, MBTW Group. Uh, as you can tell, uh, this is not a simple park design, but none of the park designs are simple. Uh, in order to meet the needs and to satisfy every single stakeholder and neighbor and resident in the area, um, you know, this is a lot of listening. And as you can tell, we've already had a number of working group meetings prior to uh, coming out to the community. And, um, you know, a politician once told me that uh, the the mayoral winner of 2014 will be the uh, the gentleman or the lady who can resolve the conflict between children and dogs. Um, ironically, neither one of those uh, uh, camps vote, uh, but, but nevertheless, I've, I've been told they will they will uh, determine the outcome of our, our next mayoral campaign. But uh, you know, really, I, I think that you know your your feedback and, and contributions tonight are invaluable. And as you can tell, there's a number of conflicting points of interest. And uh, I want to just sort of, before you know, closing up the remarks, I want to get a sense of was it concept number one that you liked more than concept number two? Because I want to see a show of hands for those who like concept number one. So that's pretty much the majority of the room. Concept number two. <laughs> okay, so so I think that gives um, our landscape architects some pretty clear direction that we're heading towards number one with some hybrid models of based on the comments coming back. Now, this park will only work um, through a couple of interventions. Number one is that you've acknowledged you you've now. Um, I think uh, we've given you some information that the ownership is, is a little bit complicated. There are a number of abutting neighbors. You may be living in one of those towers. You may be working in one of those towers. You may actually be a principal or a shareholder in one of those corporations that own one of those office towers. It only works when we work together. There are other parks in our ward that have been adopted that have become a, a they become stewards of the park. So ironically enough, with all this very sophisticated ownership around the park, we don't have a Friends of College Park yet. So as we move through the design, and as we talk about the maintenance of the park, it will probably be very worthwhile to you, knowing that when the city invests $3 million into the neighborhood, you're gonna to wanna to see this maintained well. So that might be a conversation that the neighborhood should start to think about uh, in, in the long run, because it will need a champion. You'll need to be stewards of your own park. Your real estate value and assets will go up based on the fact that you are budding, not an unattractive city park or just an average city park, but you'll be abutting a excellent city park. For those property owners, or those who can influence their property owners, if you actually happen to have a budding real estate to the park and you haven't been taking care of the edges of the park, you're part of the solution as well, if I can just put that out there. Because the city can't do it by itself. And the city may or may not do a land swap with or without you know, the, the property owners. And if that doesn't take place, for whatever reason, if I can't control that, city real estate can't control that, does that mean we only improve the edges that the city owns and not the edges that those property owners own? Right, you see how this conversation works? It only works when we do this together. So if you have any sway with your property owners, if you have any sway with your landlords or your condominium corporations, it's about getting involved with this asset. Um, and then finally, if I can just say, you know, I'm a little bit disappointed that uh, Candarell 
has uh, allowed Bath and Beyond to put up a sign uh, illuminating the park. It's not in great shape right now. It's been a partial, partially it's been occupied as a construction staging area, but you know, they're also part of the solution. Canberra is, is paying for uh, this park through their second, Section 37 and 45 contributions. Um, you know, we may not have enough money to do everything that we, we need, but urban parks are such that you have 20,000, 30,000 people living in the vicinity, all putting a lot of pressure on three quarters of an acre of land with fractured ownership and, and abutments. And so if that is the case and we need to go back for a little bit more, maybe we can come up with a, a formula that will work. Um, but you know, with respect to the sign that's actually illuminating the park right now, um, I wrote a letter, I'm objecting to that sign. The sign was put up unfortunately without approvals right now. If it can come down, that would be great. Because I think that if we're gonna put that much time and energy into design of a park, then we should make it at least beautiful. And we should treat it at the front of the house, not just the back of the house. Um, so we will stay behind and take whatever comments are, are still coming forward. I'd like to thank the Delta Chelsea for once again being our host. I'd also like to thank the parks uh, staff who are here today. They've been fantastic. As you can tell, every single park in, in, in that's going through design in Ward 27, there's a number of them, uh, each and every single one of them requires a lot of work. And uh, the work is not just the maintenance afterwards, but it's also about design and listening to the community beforehand. So your contributions were extremely valuable tonight. Um, you have a very eager hand up. Very good question. Yes. I'm sure that you can undertake that campaign. I, I wouldn't object to it. Right now, mine my, my, my might be the lonely voice out there. A quick idea, Kristen. Sure. I sure. think everyone in the neighborhood just received a mailing today from Bed Bath & Beyond that has a coupon that you can cut out and bring it to the store. Cut it out, bring it in, and say, I won't shop here until you take down the sign. Yeah. So this is a neighborhood of action. Um, there's, there's more hands. I'm trying to wrap up the meeting so you can go. Is it? Uh, Okay, three three last comments. Go ahead. Yes. Well, there was. Uh, um, sure. Why why is there only three million dollars for the um, the park? I can tell you that there was $2 million secured through the Section 37 agreement for the Canderell application, an additional million dollars afterwards uh, for the, the extra five stories that went up. Um, that is the available funds that is uh, attached to this park uh, when I walked into the office. So uh, that's, that's why it is what it is. You know, we pay a lot of property taxes, absolutely, but you're also getting a number of city services and we have to share it uh, quite uh, quite liberally across the GTA. We've got crumbling infrastructure. You've got a transit system that's over capacity. You know, we've got sidewalks that are very narrow, not in great shape. You know, I know that the downtown Yang BI works hard to try to improve their edges where they can. Um, this will not be a, a situation that's going to be solved just because the city steps in, um, because it's almost like whack-a-mole. It's like we, we take care of one piece, before I know it, there's another piece that seems to require work. It really is a collaboration between community and the city, as well as our private partners. And in this case, you actually have a very sophisticated group of owners uh, and, uh, and neighbors. So this is why I say, uh, you know, considering who is actually uh, in the room, and considering who is not in the room but actually has a stake in the area, um, this is a, a great park that deserves to have a Friends of College Park uh, adoption crew. Um, and, uh, and I think that you can do it. And we'll help you set it up. Yeah.